Neil and Kurt is an AI robotics developer. During the COVID-19 crisis, their products have, been, have played an important role in helping contain the epidemic. Today, I am joined by two guests. Uh, the first is the CEO of William Kurt, Mr. Ran, and also the Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Chen Xiaotuan. So uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so my first question I would like to ask is, um, you know, could you introduce the background to Relink Kurt technology? Okay, sure. Uh, <clears throat> so we are a artificial intelligence company. We are specializing in um, robot vision. So um, we are top 10 AI companies that were selected to visit Germany uh, this spring for the collaboration from Canada. So we are working on the robot vision for more than 10 years and our product has been widely used around the world. And our company has multiple offices uh, in China. We have offices in uh, Chongqing, we have offices in Beijing, and our headquarters, R&D headquarters, is based in Vancouver. And so that's that's us. So you have you also have a company here based in Chongqing, Liangzhang New Zone, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so do you know the, uh, the reason why your company chose uh, Chongqing as a location for the company? Yeah, uh, actually, like uh, the reason is uh, because uh, we know like um, uh, Chongqing, the Liangjiang New Zone is like a rising techno technology zone for the uh, artificial intelligence companies. And we say it's a uh, great opportunity to have an office there. So we and uh, we have been offered great deals and great uh, like uh, opportunities from the Chongqing government, Chongqing Liangjiang uh, New Zone government. For us to run our business and grow our um, grow our business in Chongqing Nanjiang Zone, New Zone. Great. So um, one of the uh, questions, well, one of the products we've been interested in is the UV disinfection robots. Uh, do you know which product I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so sure. I'm wondering if you could also um, talk to us a little bit about the the key features that this uh, robot has and how it can help with the COVID nineteen crisis. Yeah, of course. So the robot is a um, indoor autonomous uh, robot. It can run 24 seven um, and it equipped with our vision systems. So you can know its own like uh, uh, positions. It can locate itself uh, auto automatically. So it can just like a human people to run the uh, move the sanitizer around the environment. So it can clean the environment and kill the vir uh, coronavirus so it can uh, keep a very clean environment for for people. It was widely used for like uh, um, for most hospitals or clinics to do the uh, sanitizing. Yeah. And do you know how many of these uh, products have been sold worldwide, and you know how widely it is in use at the moment? So the product has been uh, widely used in in um, in China now, like a uh, hospitals, like I mentioned before, like hospitals and clinics. And also we have received like uh, orders uh, around the world, uh, for example, Europe and uh, US, we already uh, have some orders and we're shipping the new product to them very uh, shortly. And for this product, actually like uh, it has a very um, high technologies. It's a um, uh, indoor autonomous navigation robot. So it equipped with like autonomous navigation. It's indoor autonomous navigation. It's just like a, um like a cars uh like autonomous cars running outside the uh outside but our navigation system is indoor and it's more uh it's complicated in a different way because like a, uh, for indoor environment you have to avoid like a uh, crowded people it, it has to avoid collisions uh run into like people and run into like uh, some uh furniture to damage damage the environment so we have to uh, um, um, develop our technologies to uh, locate itself very um, accurately and uh, avoid those collisions. And also, like because because we are not only um, navigating in the environment, and also we will need to like clean the environment. So the the interactions between the sanitizing system and the navigation system is pretty hard because we need to know like um, uh, which part to do the clean and which part to uh, save the power for other places. Yeah. 
Okay, great. And at this point, I'd also like to introduce into the uh, into the discussion CEO, Mr. Mr. Ran. So, uh, 冉总，请问一下，就说关于产品的特点，有没有什么再想再补充一点吗？产品的特点嘛，就是呃，对产品那个特点来说呢，就是我们相比业内，因为有一些其他公司也推出同样的产品，我们应该说有两大这个优势和特点吧。一个呢，就是因为我们是一家专业的做工业设备的公司，所以我们的整个这个底层的技术都是工控级别的，啊，就不不像就是说有一些是这种商业级别的，就是说工控级别里边呢，相比我们现在用的这些商业环境，比如机场呀、医院呀这些呢，它都没有说这个制造业的工厂里边那么恶劣的环境，比如说冬天很冷，夏天很热，这个温差非常大，有很严酷的混层。呃，二十四小时连连续的工作，所以我们的这个技术都是基于这个工控的，所以可靠性非常高，这是第一个特点。第二个特点呢，呃，业内基本上他们是没有测温的这个这个功能的，因为我们自己是做机器视觉的公司嘛，所以我们最主要的特点就是我们的这个呃消毒机器人呢，我们是晚上没有人的时候可以去消毒。那白天呢，我们还可以用它来测温。比如说，你要放在机场的话，那比如说人从我的这个机器人过去，我就知道它发不发烧。然后，这写字楼呀、酒店呀、然后医院呀，都是可以这样使用的。啊，谢谢。Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so、uh, back to、uh, Mr. Chen. Could I ask, you know, how do you see the future development of AI and you know how it could be used in epidemic control? Yeah, actually, I I love AI because like I work in the AI industry, and I think for the AI, it's going to、uh, build a, like a way better world. It's just imagine like、um, the uh the computer becomes a、uh, intelligent computer. It knows about yourself and knows about like a、uh, um how to help you, how to like um、uh, uh, help you to um better manage your life. And for us, because like we are specialized in the、uh, robot vision. And so we can see, like we equip the robot with the eyes, so the robot can, I guess, <clears throat> sorry, so the robot can see the environment just like a people. So it can help us to do some like、um, repetitive tasks and help people to do some dangerous tasks, like、uh, like we are doing here for like、uh, cleaning the environment. Because you know, like the ultraviolet、uh, sanitizer, it's it, it's harmful, like、uh, for the people's health. But with our machine, we can clean the environment better than people, and、uh, in this way, we can see the AI is is for us to building a better life. Okay, that's great. So, um, in the next part of our interview, what I also what I would also like to discuss is the effect that the COVID nineteen crisis has had on your company's operations. So, I know at the moment you are based in Vancouver. Is that right? Oh、uh, yes. But, yeah, but um, could you tell us if the Outbreak has affected business here in China or in Canada to any great effect? Yeah, actually, like uh,、um, uh, at the beginning of February, our our office in Beijing was affected a lot because like our、uh, employees is not able to come into work, and we have some some、uh, contract with our customers. We are not able to、uh, provide the solutions、uh, during the February time, and we see it's a、um, it's a big challenge for us. Um, but like uh, uh, recently, like uh, uh, start from March, our employees are coming back to Beijing and they get get back to normal to、uh, start to work, start to provide solutions to our customers. However, like in Vancouver, the、uh, outbreak is just happening. So like、uh, right now, we、um, we were advised to、uh, clean our hands and wearing masks every day, and we can see some colleagues is working from home because of like cough or like some. Are sick, so、uh, we are seeing like the China is getting better, but like for the Canada, might be sounds becoming more serious. And do you think、um, people in Canada have any lessons to learn from the experience of Chinese people here in Chongqing and elsewhere in the country? Yeah, exactly. I think like、uh, people should uh, uh, learn from China to like avoid the contact with other people and wearing masks every day. Because right now there are still some people like they. They don't wear masks. They think they're safe, but actually, like they, they expose themselves into like dangerous. And also, we like right now, like the、uh, Canadian government, they are putting like a、uh, one billion Canadian dollars for 
uh, for Canada to fight against the coronavirus. I think we, we should learn from China to like uh, uh, help building um, a more strict rules to control the flow of the people. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I do so back to then, Mr. Zhang Zong, Ni Hao. 呃，就是我这一阶段，我想再问一下，就是说这这段疫情对在中国和加拿大这种的生产这一方面的，在有没有产生什么样的影响？呃，然后第二个想要的问题就是，就是你你觉你觉得加拿大人就是有没有什么，是吧？中国有没有什么加拿大人值得去借鉴的一些？就说反控的一些方面的知识吗？肯定有啊。首先是这样的，就是尤其是我们在国内的一些项目，那节前签的，本来我们春节之后是应该要去实施的，但是现在这个情况呢，基本上都是实施不了，都只能进一步往后边去延，啊，去往外去延了。那么呢，我们现在只能是就是大部分就是在家里边办公。当然了，我们本身这个两个团队，我们中加两地嘛，也是一直是网络协作的。所以现在基本上就是业务层面的、应用层面的这个工作，基本上都是停停下来了。当然，主要集中精力都在做研发啊，就包括就是我们为什么能很迅速的推出呃，像这个测温的这个机器视觉，然后推出这个带测温功能的这个消毒机器人，就是我们现在等于是呃，工作强度其实比以前更大了。啊，只不过是在家里办公，就是没没有以前说九点到六点这个了，就没点了。啊，就是为了这个疫情的这些事儿吧，就是加紧搞研发啊，就一门心思搞研发了啊，就是把我们的研发产品，一个是丰富产品线，一个是把我们的技术做得更扎实一点。然后从这个疫前疫情的这个借鉴来说呢，我觉得这个，呃，加拿大人，我我认为不管是加拿大吧，包括美国呀、意大利呀、韩国呀这些。国家他们都，我觉得犯了我们早期的同样的一个错误，就是就是这个事儿早期都比较就是轻视不不足够重视，我认为，啊，即使到现在加拿大，我看今天已经有二十有多少有六十例了，好像，整个加拿大已经有六十例了，那这个他们还现在认为是一个低风险，就是还没有把它到一个紧急很高的这个风险的的的这个情况。啊，我觉得这块还是要，要引起足够的重视吧。因为我我在想，就是咱们中国这么大的这个，呃，防控的这个措施，那证明这个病毒肯定是比 SARS 呀、比其他的这病毒啊，传染性啊，这个危害性要高得多得多。所以我认为，就是我们也是天天在呼吁啊，让加拿大这个政府和这个 CDC 要赶快重视起来啊。呃呃，我我认为主要是这个，就是重视程度还是不够啊，不足够。嗯，呃，好的，那非常感谢两位今天接受我们这是爱重庆的采访。嗯嗯，谢谢谢谢谢谢詹姆斯。<笑>